studies have shown that inaccurate communication is at the root cause of many unhealthy health outcomes. And without truly qualified and credentialed medical interpreters, how does a provider and a patient know that the communication will be interpreted accurately? Now, hospitals and employers of interpreters have devised their own exams and processes to assess medical interpreters. Some argue that a little bit is better than nothing, but I say that's very dangerous to the provider and the patient who are set up with expectations that they simply can't meet. Due to the unfamiliarity with the profession, testing has been all over the place, and well-intentioned advocates have even allowed individuals who are not fully bilingual to be trained as interpreters. The situation was unsustainable, and national certification was the only solution to this patient safety issue. You know, for me, the real question is why we didn't insist on this sooner. You know, we, we would not think of letting somebody in the, in the exam room when we're seeing a patient, talking to a patient who's not a trained professional, whether it's a nurse, social worker, therapist, technician, whatever. They are not in that room during the private moments if they're not trained, evaluated, and supervised. I think many years ago when we started doing informal medical interpretation in the room, we would grab a family member, volunteer from the community, next door neighbor, maintenance man, secretary, whatever. And we got used to thinking of the medical interpreter as not really a professional person in the room. As a hospital administrator, and more specifically as a director of interpreter services department, we have to be always mindful of three specific issues. The first one is to ensure that we have 24-7 coverage. The second one is to make sure that we have a budget that can support that coverage. And the third one, and most important one, is to make sure that the quality of the interpretation that we provide is top-notch. Let us look at some of the benefits of certification. The patient receives optimum health care because communication is clear. The health care provider can better serve the patient as both now have a neutral party that understands both languages in the room. And of course, the medical interpreter fulfills a higher need while earning a living. Thousands, if not millions, of medical interpretation assignments are completed on a daily basis. With the national certification opportunity, the field now has the momentum, as this past year has shown, to catapult to the next level. Successful completion of the national certification testing, whereby the title of certified medical interpreter is earned, means greater respect for the importance of the existence of medical interpreters, which translates into better employment opportunities with higher wages for those who apply this designation. This will create a baseline of greater expectations and benefits for everyone involved. Securing the national certification is the right thing at the right time. The IMIA started looking for partners to proceed with certification. It seemed that some organizations wanted to start from scratch, while the IMIA wanted to proceed with the historical work that it had done and not reinvent the wheel. In 2006, we founded COIA, the Consortium of Interpreter Associations, with the intent of creating a coalition to work on a multi-organizational national certification project. Then, on March 2nd of 2007, Language Line University invited leading organizations to sign a declaration of collaboration towards national certification. Voila, there was a partner there. Knowing that uh, making national certification a reality would take a collaborative effort, you know, where all the stakeholders had a seat at the table, and we, we essentially began hosting the first annual May 1st meeting, meetings that have now become a stable of the industry. Uh, but at this first meeting held in Boston in 2007, I, we asked the attendees three questions. You know, if, if they were ready for a national certification standard, if they wanted one, and is it needed? And the overwhelming response was yes. It was really interesting for us when we heard about the May 1st event that took place um, in Boston in 2007. Working with these major healthcare institutions across the state, and I understand Texas has the second largest limited English proficient population in the United States. And we felt like we had begun to be left out of that conversation. And we knew that this small group of people in, in the Northeast and Boston were, were having the, this conference um, to discuss national medical certification. We knew we needed to be a part of it. After Boston in 2007, we had another meeting of stakeholders in Portland, Oregon in 2008. And at that gathering, which was larger and more stakeholders involved, uh, it, at the end of that meeting, 
one of the participants raised their hand, and it was Orlin Marquez, who was at that time was the president of the Medical Interpreter Network of Georgia. And he proposed to all those stakeholders gathered there that we have a test by our next meeting, May 1st, 2009. So he did. He, put, he laid down the gauntlet. Everyone there unanimously agreed, and we set to work. And when we got to Denver in 2009 for the third May 1st forum for medical interpreter certification, we could celebrate. Now, many in the field quickly saw that associations shouldn't replicate or compete for this, but realized that nonetheless, it would be a difficult process due to the many organizations that had evolved since our single mandate back in 1986. Now, unfortunately, there were some that thought that national training standards had to come to be developed first, while others thought that it was certification that would actually certainly help set the new standards of training. Then there were others that simply thought the country wasn't ready and wavered on smaller issues that we just knew could be worked through if we just went ahead and started the process. It couldn't help but be polarizing. And certainly there were people there that were discussing the benefits, the pros and cons of national certification. There were conversations occurring that, hey, we're not ready, this isn't the time. There were conversations about, well, it's well past time. And being, uh, regardless of how you felt about that particular event, it, it changed the conversation regarding medical interpretation in the United States. National certification for medical interpreters will greatly facilitate our screening and hiring process. No longer will we be testing candidates based on our own experience or feedback from colleagues. To us, a certified medical interpreter has met the basic requirements of the job and needs only to be screened for peripherals, criminal history, individual traits like teamwork, sense of accountability, availability, all the other things that go into hiring someone. Language Line Services has long been a recognized leader in the delivery of quality medical interpretation and well known for our stringent medical interpreter training, testing, and certification programs. But you know, as we continued to grow and began acquiring several other language service companies, we saw firsthand the low level of quality many of those organizations had, even though they were aggressively marketing their standards and training. False claims that negatively impacted how the healthcare industry viewed medical interpreters as a whole. So it became clear that we needed to have a certification that provided this national recognition for the medical interpreting profession and cultivated greater trust in the inter interpretation industry overall. There have been other groups of clinicians in the past that have taken a while to get professionalized. You know, you think about midwives at the turn of the last century, for example. It took them quite a while to, to be validated. I think another big issue that's been a barrier is concern about cost. The people paying the bill are worried that once interpreters are professionalized, the cost of paying for interpretation will go way up. We now have pretty good research that suggests that language barriers themselves are what cost money. Uh, we pay that money without getting better outcomes, more satisfaction, more safety, and whatnot. That money is wasted, and the disparities based on language barriers continue. I think this whole thing has been in the blind spot of the medical profession and other clinical professions for a long, long time. Now it's right in front of our faces, and we can see it. The movement to start certifying interpreters brought the awareness of our profession to the surface. Many bilingual individuals affected by the downfall of the economy now realize that they can use their language skills to retrain and be recognized and valued for providing valuable service to the patients. National certification has also made the profession much more attractive. It is a profession in high demand which now has a credential to distinguish who is truly able to do the job. This just wasn't in place a year ago. Now, when we speak of the profession, we speak of a credentialed profession. When we looked at the process of creating a, a credible, uh, standardized test, we're really addressing two issues. One is the fairness of the test and also the objectivity of the test. So in order to achieve both, we worked with organizations that specialized in test development and also test validation. 
and that is the PSI. In that process, we really had to understand the standards set for certification test design. As I have said before, medical interpreters are the ultimate experts of the practice of medical interpreting, and therefore they are the ones that are best suited to maintaining control and oversight over the legitimate practice of their own occupation. It is of the utmost importance that the organization giving out credentials to a profession be sanctioned by that specific National Professional Association. Now, this is the case at the National Board, which is fully endorsed by the IMIA, which happens to be the only national trade association in the country for medical interpreters. The development of any testing instrument is a lengthy and challenging process, but I would say that this process was especially challenging due to the rigor required to design a test that would measure the interpreting abilities of a medical interpreter in any setting. In my particular hospital, other interpreters are going through the process and uh, there is this professionalism beyond the exam that is connected to the, uh, the quality of the exam. Um, in terms of the uh, value of the test, it's huge as well. Uh, if you have your CMI denomination next to your name, you immediately get to a higher ground in your professional career. When you see the look on, on the face of a patient who's working with a good interpreter, it's very hard to miss. You can tell the patient knows for once that the provider hears and understands what they say, and they are hearing and understanding what the provider says. Situation has suddenly become normal. Our interpreters have been asking about the process, and several have applied to take the exams. They've been actively seeking training courses and activities with which to fulfill their continuing education units. This year, we also created a new career ladder for our interpreters, and we were able to take out the phrase when and or if available when discussing certification. And in fact, we're now telling all current and potential employees that certification will be required by 2015. Our work is far from done. We still need to expand certification to the widest possible ranges of uh, languages. We have to make the uh, CMI designation not just an, an admired accomplishment among interpreters, but a true true standard in responsible patient care, and one that's mandated um, by federal law. And, and finally, I think, above all, we have to create a reimbursement for the services of our nationally recognized certified medical interpreters. It's time. This anniversary marks one year in which medical interpreters have had access to a national certification exam specific for them. It also marks a year in which hospitals have been able to require certification as available. Now, as more languages become available, hospitals will save with less testing on their own, but more importantly, they'll safeguard the safety of their patients. As the first year of certification closes, a new phase starts with the job analysis done in 2009 in the U.S now going international to compare the work of interpreters in different countries. These are really exciting times for the profession.